is how your mind is going to change. Because you are the Israelites. That's right. You're from the tribe of Judah. This is how your mind is going to change. It ain't going to be no self-help book. It ain't going to be no education. It ain't going to be no black wealth. It ain't going to be invested in the damn crypto market. <laughs> it ain't going to be invested in the stock market. It ain't going to be all the things. No, you know how, how do we know that those things ain't going to help black folk? Bam, you on. How do we know those things ain't going to help black folk? Cryptocurrency, education, black wealth. There's nobody more hard-headed than the black and Hispanic man on the face of the earth. We don't listen to nothing until death is staring us in the face. The Israelite man, the Israelite woman from the tribe of what? What'd you say earlier? The tribe of who? Judah. The tribe of Judah. Yeah. And your father being what? You said he was Puerto Rican or was he Haitian? Haitian. Right. My mom was Puerto Rican. What about your father? He black. He, what, where is he phrase? The islands or America? Okay, so he would be from the tribe of Judah, which would make you that too, because you are what your father is. Yes. Your mama just got eggs that are dead yes. until your father yes. implant that life into it through the seed, right? Yeah, what about you, sis, Sierra? What's your race? Black? Okay, African American. God called you Judah in the Bible. And you come from the nation of Israel. Here's one thing real quick. What do the, the white folk in Israel right now, what do they call themselves? Sierra, I'm gonna start Jewish. with you. What do they say? Jewish. They say Jewish. Yeah. Why do they say ish? Bam, you on. Why do you say ish? Why don't they just say I'm Jew? I'm a Jew. Why do you say ish? When you say your pants are blue ish, what are you saying? If I if I say, hey, I'm come through about five ish, what am I saying, bam? Am I gonna be there at five? I ain't gonna be there at five, right? So what they telling you when they say Jew ish, Sierra, what do they say when they say I'm Jewish? Huh? They're not called Jewish. They not the people. Right. That's what they said. We're not really the Jews. We something like it. That's right. You know why? Because we took those black folk land when they went where? Where did we go? Where did we go? What happened? What is this? Name one. What's the word for it? Bam. What's the word for it? What's the word, Jamal? What's the word? It start with an S. Slavery. That's right. When you Negroes got put on the ship and shipped all over the America, all over the world, white folk moved into Israel in 1948. Right. Listen to what I just said. 1948. It's been that long ago. They showed up just uh, just what 60, 80 years ago, and they said, you know what? We are Jewish now. They not the people of the book. That's right. You are the Israelites from the tribe of Judah. That's, right. That's your God-given right. name. Now read that, Romans 12 and 2, what the Israelites got to do. Read that. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Uh -huh. And be not conformed to this world. So, hold on, hold on. Read that again. And read. be, not, and be not conformed to this world. Sierra, what did that just say? How, do, how does one conform to this world? And then I'm asking you, bam. Then I'm coming to you. How do you conform to this world? Use yourself for an example. How would you conform to this world? By being something that everybody else wants you to be. See, it's something you're not supposed to be. Because the world says you can be whatever you want to. If you feel like you are a man, although God made you with two ovaries and a damn uterus to pop out a baby, but I feel like a man, the world says it's okay. God says what? Read it again. Read it and be not conformed to this world. God says don't be conformed to this world. Bam! God said be not conformed to this world. Read on. But be ye transformed. Be what? Be ye transformed. What's another word for transform, brother? Down here. What's the word? Transform. Transform. What's another word it took for transform? Now, all I can say is change. Change! Be what? Uh -huh. Be ye transformed. Changed. Read. By the renewing of your mind. That's where it started. Sierra, bam, that's where it started. Your mind gotta change. It gotta change to what? In accordance to what God says. His laws gotta be implanted in your mind, and once they implanted into your mind, they are in your soul, and then you begin to change outwardly. Because everything that you, all the things that we do and we go through, it starts where? Where does it start? It starts in the mind. 
that's what we learned it from. We think it's okay because our mind tells us that and then we convince our flesh that it's all right. right. Although we don't want to live this life, we don't want to be on the bottom no more. But you got to do what God tells you to do. That's right. Psalm 19 and 7. Here, here's how your mind is going to change. Because you are the Israelites. That's right. You're from the tribe of Judah. This is how your mind is going to change. It ain't going to be no self-help book. It ain't going to be no education. It ain't going to be no black wealth. It ain't going to be invested in the damn crypto market. <laughs> it ain't going to be invested in the stock market. It ain't going to be all the things. No, you know how, how do we know that those things ain't going to help black folk? Bam, you on. How do we know those things ain't going to help black folk? Cryptocurrency, education, black wealth, and a master's degree. How do we know historically those things ain't going to help black folk? What about you, Sierra? What about you? How we know those things that gonna help black folk? It's all made by our oppressors. It's made by your oppressors. I got one better for you. We've been trying it. Right. We've been trying it. That's right. Black women got the most college degrees out, out here in the world. Bring it out. And look at Gary, Indiana. Poor as hell. Where are the black women with these degrees to help bring his, his place up out the ground? Where LeBron James at? Where are all these NBA players? in Gary, Indiana. Money ain't going to change our situation as a people. Yeah. Read Psalm 19 and 7 to show what changes us. Psalm chapter 19 verse 7. Pay attention. The love of the Lord is perfect. The what? The love of the Lord is perfect. Bam, I'm back to you. What law did we give you earlier that God just said was perfect? Bring it out. I wasn't listening. Y'all what was the law that I gave you earlier that a man shouldn't do? Oh, I shouldn't fornicate with another man. Shouldn't fornicate with another man. Read it again. The law of the Lord is perfect. Here's the, now here's the thing. Sierra, I'm asking you, why is it perfect for a man not to lay with a man and a woman? You can put that down. And a woman not to lay with a woman. Why would that be perfect in the eyes of God? Give me that in Genesis. Come on, wait though, you see how? Why would it be? Why God said it's perfect if a man lay with a woman and a woman lay with a man, not vice versa. Why is that perfect in the eyes of God? Just think. I'm gonna give you some help. How the hell did all of us get here? Huh? Oh, I can't hear you, see how? Huh? Christ? There you go! Bam, get it! That's perfect! Bam, can you multiply with another man? Nope. Sierra, can you multiply with another woman? Per hey, bam, bam. I know you ain't perfect, but you can change that one thing about yeah, you. Hey. That's the problem. We, we, perfect means that you got everything right. Just change that one thing, bam. Bring it out. And then you can start from there. Sierra, where you going? All right, hey, understand that you can change. That's right. Because you are meant to be, uh, be fruitful and multiply with a man. That's right. Not a woman. That's right. Go back to that Psalm 19 and 7. Read it for the brother. What's your name again, brother? Anthony. Anthony, that's what it was. Read it again. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. Because what we're going over is changing and how you get to that point of changing. I'm, we've done our job with Bam and with Sierra. We've given them the word of God. And you know what? They understand. Because they was repeating the back to me what they shouldn't do. Right. So they know what they have to do going from here. Right. It's on them to do that now, right? But now you're still here, Anthony. Give me that Psalm 19 to 7 to show what's going to change the black man in Gary and Indiana for the better. Read that. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. Uh -huh. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of God is perfect. That means there's nothing wrong with thou should not kill. Right. There's right. nothing wrong with keep the Sabbath day holy. That means to keep your money in your pocket on Saturday, wait till the sun now, and then go buy whatever you want to. Or you can buy it Friday before sundown and just keep your money in your pocket on Saturday. God said that's perfect. You'll have a little bit more more money to stretch a little bit farther if you kept that perfect law. But we spend money seven days a week, 30 times a damn day, and then we're like, hey, I ain't got no money. What? Damn, just keep the Sabbath day holy. Give me that Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Come on, Carl, would you bring it out? Exodus 28, because I'm going to go with something basic 
that is perfect in the eyes of God that can immediately help you. Read that, Exodus 20 and 8. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, because that's why we out here. We out here to give solutions right. to the black man in Gary, Indiana, the black woman that says, I'm black African-American. God calls you an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. We're here to give you solutions of how to get back right with God and get your God-given name and heritage back. These are the things that the Israelites do. Read that. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We got to remember it. Because when the time, where's the sign? Give me the sign. I'm going to show you when we forgot it. This is when we forgot it. And when, when we forget it, what was we in? Slavery. That's where you forgot it. Because you, mama. Now here's, when's the Sabbath day? What day does God say it's on? Huh? Sabbath day. No, because Sunday is what day of the week? What number of the day of the week is Sunday? It's the first day of the week. God said keep holy the what day? Let's read it. Read it. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Six days, get all the money you want to. Read. But the seventh day. The what? The seventh day. Is the what? Is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So the seventh day is the Sabbath, right? God said remember it because you were going to forget it when you came here in slavery. Right. But in the last days, he would have mercy on his people and give you a chance to return to him. This is how we know Christianity is not of God because Christianity been preached all over the world, right? Has the end come yet? That means Christianity ain't of God. That let you know that that's a lie. You got that from the oppressor in slavery. He told you to go to church on the first day of the week. That's why he wouldn't allow you to read the Bible. All he told you was, slaves, obey your masters. Close the book, turn on the music. These niggas like to dance. That's right. And that's what we did. And we've been doing it for 400 years. And we never opened the book to do what? Verse 8 again. Six days, shall the top, the top. Remember the Sabbath day. We ain't never opened the book to read it for ourselves so we can remember the Sabbath day. Right. But in order to remember the Sabbath day, you got to do what? You got to remember who you are. That's right. Exodus 31 and verse 16. Because I'm going to show you something about the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day ain't meant for everybody. Right. It's meant for one people on the face of the earth to keep. Not the Jewish man. Not the Israeli man. But the actual Israelites from the tribe of Judah. That's who it's meant for the key. 31, 16, read that. Exodus chapter 31, verse 16. Uh-huh. Wherefore, the children of the Israel shall keep The children of who? The children of Israel. That's who you be. You from the tribe of what, Anthony? Where are you from? You got the shirt on. What tribe you from? Mama, what tribe you from? What, what's your race? Black. Black. What color is your clothes you got on? Is your skin black? Your skin is what color? So you ain't black. You see, that's the psychology that they tricked us to believe that you was a black. And here's the thing, because you're a little older than all of us. You are, you are, you are our grandpa. Back in the day, they didn't even call you black, did they? What they call you? So how the hell you change your race? Why are you still alive? Right. The white man been changing our race for centuries because he didn't want you to find out you the children of Israel right. from the tribe of Judah and you got to remember the what? Read it from the top again. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. You shall keep the Sabbath day holy. That's why in slavery they made you go to church on what day? Mama you said it earlier. What day they make you go to church on? Sunday. They didn't let you do it on the seventh day because you would have remembered what? Read it from the top again. Wherefore, the children of Israel, you would have remembered that you was the children of Israel. God would have made the connection. He would have pulled the spirit on you like he has done all these young black men around you in the last days. That's we right. began to keep the Sabbath day holy. Right. And he pulled his spirit back on us and taught us his word and said, now go and teach it to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's right.
And that's what we doing in Gary, Indiana. Right. You the lost sheep of the house of Israel that is cursed in the city, right. that was cursed in the fields, right. that is suffering to this day right. for the sins that we committed against God way back when. And we ain't changed yet. But now you got a chance to change if we do what? Read it again. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. Uh-huh. To observe the Sabbath throughout their generation. How long is generations? That means forever. That's throughout your generations. Read it. For a perpetual covenant. You got a covenant with God. God made an agreement. He said, when I put these brown, mocha, beautiful black people on the face of the earth, I'm going to make a covenant with them. They my people. I love them, and I'm going to treat them better than anybody else if they obey me like a son and a daughter should obey me. If they don't obey me, what do you do, mama, to a son that don't obey you? Huh? You discipline them. You know how God disciplined his children? He put you on ships. You know why he did that? Because ain't nobody more hard-headed than the black and Hispanic man on the face of the earth. We don't listen to nothing until death is staring us in the face. We will take our chances all the way to the damn deathbed. We will eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, smoke cigarettes, drink till our candy's gone, and then when we on our deathbed, we'll say, God, please have mercy on me. And God said, I got to put y'all ass in slavery because y'all some rebellious ass Negroes. But we are supposed to remember the Sabbath for a perpetual covenant with God. Read it. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel. Between the children of who? Children of Israel. All the Asians. Children of Israel. The Arabs. Children of Israel. We made a covenant for a sign between me. You know what that means? When these people keep the Sabbath day holy, you're going to know that they my people. You're going to know that they my sons. They my daughters. And I am with them and they are with me. That's why the white man made you go to church on Sunday on the first day of the week so you would never remember who you are. That's right. But in these last days, you got a chance to return, to repent, and come back to God. Give me that Baruch. You got your pocketbook? Yes, sir. Give me that in Baruch chapter 2, verse 30. In order for us to come back to God as the children of Israel that he called us, because our skin ain't black, we ain't African and American. You know you ain't that because they used to call you Negro. Then they called you black with Jesse Jackson. Said, you know what? We don't like Negro no more. 1988, Jesse Jackson said, I think African American fits us better. You remember that? And they pushed it in the newspapers. Right. And it caught on. And black folks started calling themselves African Americans. Before that, when we got off the ship, we was niggas. Then we became colors, colored in the 50s. And then in the 60s, we became black. And then we became African Americans in the uh, in the 80s on up. Right now, we are just straight lost. We don't know who we are. That's why we get different answers from all of our people. You search it, and now you got the, 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 the answer to who you truly are. You just got to remember who you are. When you read the Bible, you'll see it with new eyes now. You know what they talking about, Jewish people. They're talking about us. They took our name from us for a reason. Read that Baruch 2 and 30. Baruch chapter 2, verse 30. Listen to this. For I knew that they would not hear me, uh -huh. because it is a stick nut people. It's a what? Stick nut people. A stiff neck people. Mom, what do you say when the when the boys walk around stiff stiff neck? Your little grandson. What what is he? Is he is he an angel on earth or what is he? <laughs> if he's stiff neck. Huh? What is stiff neck? What if your if your kid your grandson won't obey you? He's stiff necked. He bad. Read that from the top again. For I knew that they would not hear me. Uh huh. Because it is a stiff neck people. <laughs> we the children of God. That's us. Right. Stiff neck God. Yep. I know what you say, God. But I ain't doing it anyway. Nope. I love my cigarettes. I love my. Per I love shopping on Saturdays when I got the day off. I know what you. You said God, I know you created me and I didn't create myself, but I'm gonna do what I want to do. Hey. God said, I'm gonna, you are stiff necked people. Read on. But in the land of their captivity, in the land of their what? Captivities. In the land of their captivities. 
Where were we captive at? Here in America. Some of, cause we migrated up north, right? We all migrated. We used to be down in Georgia. We used to be in Florida, Mississippi. All of us got family from the south, right? He said in the land of their captivity, they gonna do what? They shall remember themselves. They gonna do what? They shall remember themselves. They gonna remember they from where? Uh, Anthony, they from the tribe of what? You remembering yourself. That's right. In the land of your captivity, in the last days, when God said it's time for them to come back home. It's time for them to come up out of the land of their captivity. It's time to come back home, y'all. But in order to go back home, now here's it, you got kids, Anthony, and he not obeying the laws of the house, the house rules. Do they get to come back in the house? You ain't let them back in there. Why? Because they're going to tear up everything you got in the house. God said you can't come back home until you obey the commandments of God. That's right. I gave them to you. I made a covenant with you as a perpetual covenant throughout your generations. And in order to come back home after you do what? You were what? If they shall remember themselves. After you remember yourself, now you got to do what your father told you. You can't come back home being a rebellious child. He gonna leave you where you are until you learn your lesson. That's right. Just like any good parent would, because if I kept giving you everything, even in your rebellion, would you learn discipline? Would you learn the right way? Or would you continue in your bad habits? You will continue in your bad habits. This is it, this is the result. This is the result of us continuing in our bad habits. This is why you can't find a job. This is why you're, uh, you're, you're having kids in a wedlock. This is why the father ain't around. This is why you're, you got grandsons that been killed. You got brothers been killed, shot down. You guys got, got them um, drugs. They, they done been murdered. They done been stabbed. Why? Because we have not remembered ourselves and repented. Turn back. You have done with it. Turn back from your ways. They ain't right. They ain't right. Black folk, we ain't living right. Man live with man. Women fornicating everywhere. And, and you know, Grandma, you know, these women of today show that ain't got no respect like you all did back in the day. They ain't got that for themselves no more. It's all about the almighty dollar bill. Give me that in a... Uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter 8 and, and verse 46. I'm going to show you what King Solomon said. Because King Solomon is a black man from the tribe of Judah. That's the ancestor. Uh, that's the ancestor. Oh, I don't, I don't need it. I don't need it. This word of God is free. Go ahead. Y'all have paid my son too. Oh, okay. All right. All praises, brother. We have paid for his funeral. We wish he could have been here with us, but Lord's will, uh, God have mercy on his soul. All right. Read that 1 Kings 8, 46. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46. This is what Solomon said about the children of Israel in the last days. Watch how much this is talking about us, and Watch this. Read. If they sin against thee. If they do what? If they sin against thee. All have sinned that fall is short of the glory of God. Don't they say that in church? All have sinned that fall is short of the glory of God. Who's he talking about all? He's talking about the children of Israel. Right. He's talking about all of us have sinned. Read. For there is no man that sinneth not. Uh -huh. And thou be angry with them. God be what? And thou be angry with them. Get ready for the side again. I'm going to show you God's anger. Read. And deliver them to the enemy. He do what? And deliver them to the enemy. You think God is fake. You think he, he, he ain't sitting in the heavens watching down on his children. If he do what? If he deliver who? Deliver them to the enemy. How did God deliver us to the enemy? We used to be on a thing just like this. You know what they called it? A auction slave block. Bring it out. Nigga, nigga, nigga sold to Master Johnson up there in Gary, Indiana for 40 shillings. Oh, give me that bad witch over there. Give me 20, 20. She got five. That kid. Somebody give me a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, five hundred. Sold to Master Jenkins down there in Tennessee. Read it again for him. That delivered them to the enemy. God delivered us to the enemy. That's facts. That's history. That ain't made up. That ain't no church. That ain't no religion. That's history. God delivered us to the enemies. Read. So that they carried them away captives. They did what? Carried them away captives. How did they carry us away captive? On what? On ships. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed 
But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.